Okay, today I'm going to be making a port here for the John Deere 410 loader backhoe. It's, uh, I talked about my last video. If you haven't seen the last video, uh, there'll be a little port up here in the top corner of your screen. Uh, be sure to go check that out. The new camshaft I put in this engine has a different style uh, pin that drives the tachometer. And uh, here's one out of the older camshaft. And it's depressing style. And uh, it just pushes right in. And the new camshaft takes a style that threads in. And uh, I started pricing them. They were between 85 and 125 So I'm not going to spend that kind of money. The tachometer doesn't even work on this machine. But I hate not to put the pin in for if anybody else down the road that owns the machine after me. If they'd want to repair it, then they'd have to remove the engine to put this pin in. So I'm going to go ahead and just uh, modify this pin here. I'm going to go ahead and drill this hole out all the way through at the back side. And then I'm going to drill from the back side all the way in and uh, drill the size bigger. And I'm going to put a bolt in and uh, weld that bolt in there. By drilling in from this side here with that already existing hole, I should be able to keep it perfectly straight and uh, get my hole right where it needs to be because I don't want this to be cockeyed or anything because it is going to be spinning on that camshaft. So I'm going to go ahead and use my old trusty drill press. That's probably older than dirt, but it works, so I'm going to use it. Uh, before we get started here, don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed already. Hit that notification bell so you're notified of new videos. And uh, be sure to like the video if you like it. And always comment down below. Always like to hear what you guys have to say. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this made and uh, see if I can save some money. Okay, the first hole here went really nice, and uh, it looks pretty darn straight there to me. And I guess I'll go ahead, switch out bits, and uh, drill it out here one size bigger. Okay, got it drilled out where it should be, and now uh, this bolt here should fit tightly into there, and I'm going to have to uh, cut the head off this bolt so I can uh, put the other end in. I'm also going to have to cut this shaft off. I need to get the measurements, see how long this needs to be, because that bolt is going to be uh, going to make it too long if it just sticks in here. So I'm going to go look up some measurements and see what they should be, and uh, we'll uh, get this bolt put in. Okay, I just took a bunch of measurements and stuff, and I believe I have an idea here what to cut. Um, I'm going to just, just use the angle grinder to cut off wheel. And uh, it would be nice if I had a vise to, to clamp this in, but I don't have one handy right now, so I'll just use a pair of vise scripts here. And uh, I'm just going to cut it off here at this, uh, where the splines are. I'm going to just cut off grab that line so with any luck I can get a straight enough cut here with this grinder I 
Okay, that's not too bad right there. And I'm going to go ahead and get my bolt here cut off. For right now, I'm, I'm just going to cut the head off and then I can get a more precise measurement once the head's taken off here. Okay, now I've got that slipped into there. Now I just need to get my uh, exact measurement here and uh, get this slightly trimmed up to where it's at the right distance. Okay, I just now got it marked right here uh, where it needs to be cut at. Okay, got it cut off here to the right length and uh, it slides in. I don't know if you can see that little uh, mark right there on it that I made. And that's what needs to go into, and that's what needs to be welded in that. I'm going to go ahead and try to uh, torch weld this in. I can be the best bet. And um, I'll go ahead and go get some rod and uh, try to get this done up here. Okay, I'm using the torch to weld this, and I just have a uh, brazing tip put on the torch. And I'm just using for rod, just a uh, 6011 welding rod. And uh, this side here, this side needs to be brazed or welded. And um, I put the other half on this side to uh, keep it halfway level. And uh, of course, now the one's going to want to come up a little. We'll say I'm not the best at torch welding, but we'll see how this goes here. Maybe it wasn't the best idea to do this on a block of wood. Okay, here it is. It's not really the uh, prettiest, but I mean, that should work. It seems to be uh, straight, and uh, I'll go ahead and get it put in here and see how it looks. A lot of these here have a flat spot on each side, so you can put a wrench on them. I didn't really see much of a point of doing that, and I'm just uh, using a pair of vice grips here just to clamp onto it and tighten it down. Uh, the tachometer cable goes inside, so if the outside has a few teeth marked in it, I don't really see why it hurt anything. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, get this pulled back out now that I know that it fits and it is uh, looking straight. And I'm going to go ahead and pull it out and uh, stick some Loctite on it and get it put back in. And I'd say this here is done. Okay, got the pin put in and uh, we got Loctite on it. It seemed to tighten down good. And it uh, seems nice and straight, and uh, I think it's going to work out pretty good. It's uh, sure a lot better than spending $100 on this part, and uh, I can now put that money into uh, other stuff for this backhoe. And uh, I guess I'm going to do it here for this video. And uh, be sure to like this video if you like it, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. And uh, always leave a comment down below, always like to hear what you guys have to say. And uh, I appreciate you guys watching, I'll see you next week.